that have parents, you can see that they feel that this program, more than anything else, has helped to help lift the school of which they're a part of. And I think that the ordinary people in particular, uh, um, you know, really relish the program and, and um, appreciate it. And that is why it has been sustained over the years. <laughs> I would like to tell them thanks to help, help the younger people and the old elders. I think this is the best thing that ever happened around here for where parents, parents are concerned. The teachers are all committed to the program's objective. Some come on board very shy, timid of the computer. Some fear it actually. But um, I've seen where they've grown to come very acclimatized to it and like having fun with it. You know, some of them really touch me like um, last week, a student came to me and, you know, I, I, we're doing um, an icebreaker, right, just to warm up the class before. And uh, um, we had a discussion and he said to me, you know, since coming to this class, right, it has taken me off the roads and so forth. So, you know, that's my motivation and it keeps me going. It's fuel. Give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. This old proverb is true to the work of the Doheny Park Primary Hope Evening Institute. For more information on the Social Development Commission SDC community-based organization initiatives, please contact their office at 928-8304. Or, for more details on the Doheny Park Primary Hope Evening Institute, please call 933-4519. Not fully informed of the issues pertaining to the delay in the appointment of a new United States Ambassador to Jamaica? Coming up, more on that matter and other issues which made the headlines in recent days. Increased pension benefits, import duty changes, improving public transport and diplomatic affairs were the highlights in recent days. Hi there, I'm Simone Wolf with your news of the week. Government pensioners are to get increases in their benefits come January of next year. $500 million was set aside in the 2009-2010 budget for the increases and Cabinet signed off on the expenditure on November 16. It includes different levels of increase for pensioners who earn less than $30,000 a month, between $30,000 and $49,000 and over $50,000 per month. The minimum pension payable to persons who have retired due to ill health will also increase. Government has had to seize the granting of discretionary waivers on duties. Cabinet on Monday the 23rd, 2009, decided that with effect from December 1st, 2009, there will be a freeze on the granting of discretionary waivers except for approved charitable and not-for-profit not organizations, special humanitarian cases. Minister Vaz says this became necessary as government recorded significant reductions in revenue inflows during the first half of the current financial year. The government is pursuing a major overseas rehabilitation program to get more buses into the public transport system. Old damaged buses originally tagged for scrap metal are to be rehabilitated through an initiative with a Brazilian company. To test the feasibility of the program, a badly damaged 2002 Torino Volvo B74 45-seater bus was shipped to Brazil recently for repairs. The fully reconditioned bus was recently unveiled. More farmers will have access to loans as the Development Bank of Jamaica, the DBJ, widens its credit window. The directive comes from the Minister of Finance and the Public Service, Audley Shaw. The DBJ will divert some of the money it lends through PC banks and make the funds available to farmers through credit unions instead. Some $150 million will now be available through this channel. 
And finally this week, Prime Minister Bruce Golding has told Parliament that the delayed appointment of a new United States ambassador is not unique to Jamaica. The previous U.S. ambassador to the island, Brenda LaGrange Johnson, demitted office in January of this year. The Prime Minister says the delay in finding her replacement may be due to the U.S. State Department's preoccupation with other matters. He says there has been a general delay in the processing and approval of the U.S. President's nominees for several positions. And those were just some of the stories making news here in Jamaica in recent days. Join us next time for the latest news of the week. At present, there is no vaccine available to protect against influenza A H1N1. However, there are everyday actions that can help prevent the spread of germs that cause respiratory illnesses like influenza. Take these everyday steps to protect your health. Cover your nose and mouth with a tissue when you cough or sneeze. Throw away the tissue in the trash after you've used it. Wash your hands often with soap and water, especially after you cough or sneeze. Alcohol-based hand sanitizers are also effective. Avoid touching your eyes, nose or mouth germs spread this way and try to avoid close contact with persons with flu-like symptoms a message from the jamaica information service the voice of jamaica if there's a fire who do you call first the firemen of course and the agency is the jamaica fire brigade but do you know that the mandate of the brigade goes beyond extinguishing a blaze on this week's edition of Issues and Answers, Public Relations Officer of the Jamaica Fire Brigade, District Officer Emilio Ibanks, speaks on how the brigade carries out its work. Mr. Ibanks, welcome to Issues and Answers. Thanks for having me. First, let's hear what the public thinks about your organization. So the fire brigade don't come same time when we call them. Well, sometimes I'm going to respond quickly and sometimes I'm done. Sometimes I'm coming speedy still. When you call them, when you get them, they do. I don't think the fire brigades come fast enough when there's a fire. Sometimes when they reach a building, they don't burn down already. Some usual negative uh, responses, firemen are not responding on, on, on time, people have to wait long, that kind of thing. What are your responses to, to these real and anguished concerns? All right. we, we of all persons, we understand when a person is in a situation that they need help, in an emergency, yes. persons are trapped, they need help. They a minute will seem like an hour. Yes. We understand that situation. What we actually have is a situation where our, our, we have a program in place. First of all, we have the Fire Brigade Citizens Charter. Mm -hmm. Now, the Citizens mm -hmm. Charter states our responsibility to the public and the public's responsibility to us as well. Our responsibility, or one of our responsibilities, is a timely response to every emergency call that we get. Now, I want the public to understand this. In an event where there's a fire, there's a critical time that the fire brigade must get to the scene to be able to save anything at mm -hmm. all. And I also like to tell persons, we are firefighters. And like any other member of the public, we don't like to lose a fight. Nobody goes into a fight mm -hmm. to lose. Yeah. And we are firefighters by profession. The longer it takes us to get to a scene, the harder the fight will be for us okay. and the difficulty Good will point. be raised in terms of us winning the fight. Mm. Mm. So we put things in place to make sure that once a fire call is received or any kind of emergency call is received, that fire unit is out of the station within a minute. Within a minute? Within a minute. And I, I, I will challenge anybody. You're passing any fire station at any time yeah. at all. You hear that bell go off, you stop there and you look at your watch. Within a minute? Within a minute, that fire will be, will, will is be rolling out of on the vehicle. Yes, and rolling out of the station within a minute. Yeah. The responsibility of the public to us now, whenever you call to report a fire, the person who is actually taking that information from you is not going to be responding to the fire. Yeah. That person is actually taking information to facilitate the easiest yes. route to get from the scene. Or get to mean, I mean, to get. From